So what I'd like to introduce now is semantic tags, because when a lot of people looked at these reports, they liked them from the basic idea, but they would also start to tell me, you know, Janet, we have 8,000 accounts, and some of them can, some projects can have all of them on them. Sometimes I've got 8,000 accounts flowing into product profitability. We really need to do something on top of that to make this account information easier for controllers to, to consume. And out of this idea came the idea of a semantic tag. So what we're looking at here is another example of a standard report that we deliver. You can see all the drill down dimensions, and these are going to look pretty familiar if you've worked with COPA in the past. So you've got a drill down by build to party, you've got a drill down by company code, by country, by customer, by customer group, and so on. These are just the dimensions in COPA or profitability analysis in the Universal Journal. And you can see in this case, we've opened up the product sold group. So we can see that the relative values for cruising bikes, mountain bikes, racing bikes, and youth bikes. But what's interesting here is that instead of the lines being based on accounts, which I say can get pretty cumbersome if you've got a very complex profitability model, we've got here the measures being defined as semantic tags. So if you think of each of those lines here as being a semantic tag, you've got a tag for build revenue. That's what I charge the customer for selling him one of those bikes. I've got a tag for recognized revenue. The idea there is I'm doing real-time revenue recognition. If I want, I'm, I'm really understanding what, what I've actually built and what I should have built but maybe haven't yet because the delivery is not completed. Or in a professional services environment, I've got time recordings that have not yet been billed. And you can carry on down, and you start to see those familiar things that are coming out of product costing. So you've got your variable cost of goods sold. You've got your fixed cost of goods sold. You've got your price differences coming out of production. You've got, then got the typical things that are flowing into an allocation, so administration overhead, sales overhead, marketing overhead, research and development overhead. And finally, you've got the build quantity. And each of these are basically tags which we deliver. We deliver this whole report out of the box. And what you would do in order to be able to run this report is you would configure your system to say, in my system, build revenue is accounts A to C. Cost of goods sold are accounts D to E. Cost of goods sold fixed, accounts F to G, and so on. And the idea is that these tags are linked with nodes in the financial statement version. And that would be the implementation effort for this report to actually tag your accounts with these tags so you can use this sort of report out of the box. So you can see it's very different from the way we built COPA in the past, where we gave you a transaction KE30 and pretty much left you to get on with it, because we never knew what characteristics you were going to choose in your operating concern. We never knew what value fields you'd set up. We never knew what calculated key figures you'd build. And the idea here is you can be up and running relatively quickly. Or if you want, you can start building your own tags and changing this as you see fit. So to give you the background as to what we're doing, what we found was people were really complaining about all, this, all these different structures that they have to maintain in finance. So you had the financial statement version. You had a cost element group. You had account groups. And we found with a lot of our major customers, you know, they had shared service centers sitting out in Melilla. And basically, all they were doing was trying to keep these structures up to date. And the danger, of course, was not just adding a new GL account, but making sure it was in all the right structures. Otherwise, it was missing from in reporting terms. And it was tricky to use these hierarchies in the multidimensional drill downs. So the idea was to build these tags to classify the the accounts for reporting purposes. For COPA, I've been through the example, but you'll also find that we deliver tags for um, cash reporting. So we say as SAP, you know, we know what the cash flow looks like. We know what typical things people look at are. And the idea is that you can take these tags and make them part of your own analytical query, or you can use it out of the box if you want. So this gives you more of an idea of what this looks like. So there's actually a new step in configuration. We deliver about 58 semantic tags. They're used in a lot of our standard KPI-based reports, 
So I've mentioned cash flow and contribution margin already. There's also one for project profitability that's designed for the use in professional services and for event-based revenue recognition. And the idea is that we can, we as SAP can deliver these dashboard-like applications out of the box rather than a tool set where some, some implementation partner has to spend time building these things. And the work that you have to do is to take your financial statement version and tie the nodes to the relevant tags. If you think the financial statement version is a little bit narrow, remember, of course, that all those secondary cost elements are going to be in there now because technically they're just accounts like the more familiar P&L accounts and balance sheet accounts. The other thing you can do if you want to, if you're doing cost of goods sold reporting, is you can assign a combination of an account and a functional area to the semantic tag as the need arises. So as, as I say, the implementation effort is to tag the information in your financial statement versions into these semantic tags for reporting. One thing that's important is the idea is that semantic tags remain stable. So your organization shouldn't end up with more than a couple of hundred because those are the KPIs that you're running your business by. Those are the measures that you want to judge performance by. But what typically happens is people end up having a lot of financial statement versions. I mean, most people have a different one for each country. They may, in some cases, they have really separate charts of accounts for some countries. So they might really have a French chart of accounts, a German chart of accounts, an Italian chart of accounts, and so on. And the idea is no matter what diversity there is in the financial statement versions in the various countries, when you talk about revenue, they're all mapped to the semantic tag revenue. So what shouldn't happen is that your semantic tags end up getting multiplied out by other dimensions like country or what have you. They're really a fixed way of looking at your costs. And then you're going to be doing the drill down based on that navigation panel on the left. So all the other dimensions that you've got in the Universal Journal. So you're going to be dr able to drill down your revenue by the company code for France or by the company code for Italy. You're going to be drilling down by customer products and so on. Don't try and bring those drill down elements into your semantic tags. This should be a fixed measure. This is what you're looking at the organization with. So think of it as just a different way of looking at your accounts, of structuring your accounts for management reporting purposes. So just to give you an idea what some of these standard reports that we deliver look like, so event-based revenue recognition, as I said, is something that we've done for the professional services industry. The idea is that with every time recording, instead of the time recording resulting in costs that sit as expense on the project until I come along at period close and run results analysis and then settle those costs, I've got a piggyback posting. So if I've got the billing information behind that commercial project, which I typically do in the professional services world, and also in some manufacturing type organizations. I can use the information that I have on the way that project's going to be billed. I can use the information on the plan profit to derive the revenue that I assume is going to be associated with that time recording that I just posted. And we've got some nice apps built with some of these standard tools that are going to allow me to view that data based on these semantic tags. I showed you product profitability. And I talked a little bit about the cash flow statement. The idea with the cash flow statement is exactly like product profitability that we as SAP say, you know, basically cash flow is cash flow. We design you a simple cash flow statement. And the idea is that you map the relevant accounts into each of the elements in that cash flow statement. Or you say, no, no, we do things differently. And you start to define your own tags. The project profitability is similar to the product. What we're doing there. It's something that I talked a little bit about in the book, but didn't really show you any good reporting applications, because at the time we hadn't really built them to any great extent. But the idea there is I'm able to post time, close expenses, and so on to the project. And because I know which um, characteristics are behind that project, because I know what the billing plan is, I know what the sales order looks like, I can immediately derive my COPA dimensions. So I'm looking not just at the single dimension cost by project. I'm looking at cost by project with the additional dimensions, the product that's associated with that project, the customer, the region, and so on. I can basically fill that whole COPA line at the time of posting. 
And that's really one of the things we've been talking about with real-time finance. We're trying to get away with, from this idea that things sit around at expense, and then at period close, we suddenly say, actually, this is work in process. Actually, this is stuff that's waiting to be built. But that instead, we're deriving the characteristics in COPA immediately where we can, as we post to an order, as we post to a project. Sometimes you can even do it when you post to a cost center. And then I use the event-based revenue recognition on top to set up rules that say, if I've done a time recording, please recognize this revenue. And we've got some functions for intercompany billing where you can piggyback that time recording if the sender and the receiver are in different company codes and set up a, an intercompany profit margin so that you've never got the sender and the receiver company out of line. You've always got lines in, posting lines in both companies. So you get away from needing that reconciliation ledger between the two. So we're really redesigning our postings. It's not just a question of dropping everything into the universal journal, but long term trying to rebuild our processes so that we take things out of the close. We give you information that you can use along the way. Of course, we're not finished. There'll be plenty more to do. We're still working with some of our major customers to take these ideas further. But I think it gives you an idea of where we're going. And I really like these semantic tags as being a very simple way of structuring information, and making it easier to consume. Because of course, what we'd like to do is push a lot of this work out of the controlling department and to the project manager who's looking how much has been billed to the product managers and so on. And of course, this will only work if they've got very attractive and easy to use reports.